Uh, welcome to the Axiom video on our brand new flagship model, the M100. And we wanted to do a pretty short video here today just to, to capture some of the highlights of this, uh, this new model and sort of why we, we even endeavored in this project in the first place. So the M100, as you can see, uh, is... Um, is uh, quite quite large. Contains uh, three six and a half inch of our new high powered driver, and the whole goal behind this product was really came from a um, there's a bit of a return to stereo out there, and and a, and a lot of our customers were were really looking for a very very high powered um, natural large sound stage stereo pair of loudspeakers and uh, really the, the the project probably goes back um, you know starting about three almost four years ago when we first started to envision how to do this and over that period of time um, Andrew has actually developed a, a new woofer and and a new tweeter which was all a part of this project of um, you know, the return to stereo and the fact that if you don't have a subwoofer, so it's not a home theater system, so likely in two-channel you don't have a subwoofer, and uh, you're, you're filling probably, which could be a very large space, um, with just two loudspeakers, we, we really wanted to make sure that people could play this pair of loudspeakers loud and clean, uh, use big amplification, have no compression happening in the bass whatsoever, um, and, and and that was that was a major part of the the design um, goals of this product. So I'll I'll let Andrew talk a little bit about the technical side of it. Yeah, basically what we uh, what we started with was actually what was then our flagship, the M80, which had, has been around for what since 2000, 2001. Yeah, mid 90s there. almost. And um, Really, that's not a speaker that we ever looked at of saying had any sort of limitations. It has good frequency response, good extension, sounds great, can play loud, and there really, you know, there really weren't any major identifiable issues. But we said to ourselves, in most applications, our customers were using M80s in the context of a home theater system with a subwoofer. And when you take a subwoofer out of the equation, now extension and linear extension, particularly at very low frequencies, becomes something that you're looking for. And also you need to have good dynamic capability at those low frequencies to really give you the sense that you've got full bottom end, full frequency range, and you're not losing anything, particularly at high levels. So we took our existing drive units and said, what do we need to do to get this dynamic capability and this extension right to the very bottom end of the usable frequency response and really there were two major things that we that we had to address one was the woofer which uh, by the way is available in what we call high power versions of both the m60 and the m80 as well and really this was a, a woofer that's got a larger voice coil uh, it's got a larger roll surround, which means there's more linear excursion capability, and it can handle far more amplifier power than, than the existing M80 woofer can. Now, that's not to say that the M80 is any slouch, but again, if you're going to be running high levels right down to 30 hertz, 25 hertz, that area, you need that power handling capability. The other thing we have to remember is that when when you've got only two loudspeakers and you want to carry the full range, if you want really high dynamics, you're not, you're not splitting that output level between you know, five speakers, seven speakers, and subwoofers anymore. You have to get that out of two speakers. So in large spaces, you need to run you know, more power through the speakers to get those, that satisfying dynamic level up. So. Power handling was one very important thing. In the tweeter to deal with power handling, we've gone to a, a die-cast uh, faceplate assembly. The old one was, was plastic. And that's actually significantly increased the power handling capability of the tweeter 
due to the, the cooling. We're actually using the faceplate as a heat sink. Now the other thing that was important is that with multi-channel systems you naturally get a very large sound stage. You're surrounded with loudspeakers. In two-channel you're depending very much on those two speakers and the quality of the, the recording that you're listening to. But one of the things that we, uh, we started to look at a number of years ago now was something called the listening window and the sound power. And really these things just talk about what we call the family of curves, which is how the speaker behaves from a frequency response standpoint if you measure all the way around the cabinet, so at any point. If I pick this sheet up here, this actually shows the purple curve on top is the, the listening window of an M100, and the green curve below it is the sound power. Now, the listening window is simply average that takes into account plus or minus 45 degrees from the on-axis frequency response of the speaker and creates an average. That gives you an indication of what your perceived tonal balance of the speaker is going to be in a typical room. You don't want any major discontinuities, you want it to be nice and smooth. Similarly, the sound power now takes into account the entire reflected energy that's going to be in the room combined with that listening window signal. Again, you want it to be smooth with no d discontinuities. Now, that's very nice from a technical standpoint. What does it mean in terms of the performance of the speaker? What it really gives you is that the better the listening window and the sound power can be in terms of smoothness, you get a wider, more enveloping sound stage, you get better imaging, and really now you can have two speakers that not only seem to disappear with a good recording, but they will fill the space. And that's very important when we're talking about uh, two-channel stereo setups. So there's a few of the things that we, we endeavored to do with the M100, which we've now trickled down or started to trickle down into the other models. But the M100 is really, I think, an ultimate statement of a full range, true full range speaker that's perfectly suited to two-channel reproduction. Great. Thanks for that, Andrew. And uh, I think just in... Just in closing, um, you know, we now have a complete line of, uh, of these uh, high-powered um, tower loudspeakers, which are designed specifically for stereo reproduction, uh, M6080 and, of course, the M100. And the M100 is also a really, really great sort of match to the release of the ADA1500, which in a two-channel configuration into the 4-ohm load of the M100, can deliver 750 watts per channel and this is a speaker that has uh, what loves that kind of power and, uh, and and sort of gives you the ultimate two channel system so thanks Andrew and thanks for watching and uh, till next time bye